Today, which banks are writing the most mortgages? Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to the latest posts covering finance and problem news with a distinctively Australian flavour. APRA has released their monthly banking stats to the end of November. They are, of course, in the process of a major revision of these statistics, but we are now beginning to get some trend data down to the individual ADI level. The data is based on gross balances outstanding by owner-occupied and investment loans, but it does not show where new loans were added or loans were paid, so little flow data can be imputed. Nevertheless, total owner-occupied loans rose 0.51% in November, which is equivalent to $3.58 billion, to $1.09 trillion, while investment loans fell 0.01% or $75 million to $643 billion. The share of loans for investment purposes fell again to 37%. The trend movements shows some improvement relative to earlier months. Total loans rose by 0.32% in the month, which would give an annualised 3.8% reading. The RBA data released before Christmas for the total market showed that total loan growth over the past year for mortgages fell to the lowest ever at 2.9%, which suggests that non-banks may be lending less now relatively, but we cannot be sure of this. However, we can look at individual lenders. The relative share of the largest players hardly changed, with CBA still the largest owner-occupied lender, while Westpac has the largest share of investment loans. However, the relative movements this month underscored divergent results from different lenders. CBA and Macquarie, for example, both saw significant growth in loans in the month, with Macquarie writing net more investment loans than any other lender at $718 million. Bendigo Bank and AMP Bank are also chasing investment lending, but on the other hand, ING dropped their investment loan balances alongside the other big lenders, with NAB down $661 million and ANZ down $263 million and Westpac down $602 million. Suncorp and Credit Suisse both drop their own occupied and investment loan portfolios. And finally, the relative proportion of loans for investment purposes revealed that Macquarie has 44.8% of its loans for this purpose. Westpac has 44.5%, NAB 42.6% and City 37.7%. Bearing in mind that investment loans are intrinsically more risky, this is worth watching. So, some small uplift in net volumes of loans this month, but not equally spread across the sector, which suggests that different players have different underwriting settings. And the growth in lending suggests that the household debt ratio is set to continue to rise, despite its already stratospheric level. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.